According to a 2019 online survey, Americans have more than 5 billion items sitting at home that they no longer use. Almost one in four people say their garage is too cluttered to fit a car inside. One-click shopping and the globalization of overseas manufacturing has made it easier than ever for consumers to acquire goods. And with Americans relocating out of cities and redesigning home offices due to the coronavirus pandemic, the self-storage industry should be thriving. A lot of people are losing their homes. As we saw pretty massive job losses last spring. Uh, it may be that we're forced to move in, move back home with parents or, or double up and uh, maybe still had the, you know, the money to put their belongings in a storage unit. Self-storage is largely a life event driven business. So in good times and difficult times, you know, there's a need for storage. And that's our job is to solve that problem, get our customers to a better tomorrow. According to the Self-Storage Association, an industry trade group, more than 10% of households in the U.S. rented a self-storage unit in 2020, 18% more than 2005. During the pandemic, the self-storage industry has continued to outperform, with several companies reporting strong occupancy and healthy demand, according to the research site Yardi Matrix. But with headwinds threatening the economy, will self-storage companies like Public Storage and Extra Space Storage be able to maintain their momentum? And what will new disruptors like Neighbor and Clutter mean for the future of the industry? The self-storage industry in the U.S. got its start in the 1960s and early 1970s. With the rise of consumerism post-World War II, Americans began buying more products and looking for a place to park them. Beyond a need to store excess stuff, demand in self-storage historically comes from what industry insiders refer to as the four Ds. Death, divorce, displacement, and disaster. So self-storage benefits anytime there's there's movement, a move of, a, of an office, a move of a business, um, a remodeling of a home. To the extent that we are continuing to see those larger patterns in the way that we live our lives, uh, we're going to continue to see strong, uh, I think, demand drivers for, for self-storage. By 2020, the self-storage industry in the U.S. had become a $22 billion market, according to IBIS World, with approximately 60,000 facilities as many locations as Starbucks, McDonald's, and Subway combined. Public Storage, the largest self-storage company in the U.S., had revenue of $3.5 billion in 2019, 6.5% higher than 2017. The company got its start in 1972, operates thousands of locations across the U.S. and Europe, and had a market cap hovering around $40 billion at the end of 2020. Shares of the company surged from a closing price of $22.75 on January 3rd, 2000, to a closing price of $276.27 on April 4th, 2016. But the coronavirus pandemic has taken its toll on the company and the industry. Public storage saw revenue decline almost 3% for the three months ended September 30th, 2020, from the year prior. It's a similar story for Extra Space Storage. The company got its start in 1977, and as of September 30th, 2020, owned or operated more than 1,900 self-storage stores in 40 states, Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico. The company had revenue of $1.3 billion in 2019, 18% higher than 2017. Shares of the brand grew tremendously from a closing price of $13.29 on January 3, 2005 to a September 4, 2019 closing price of $123.52. But for the three months ended September 30, 2020, same-store rental sales declined 1.5% compared to the previous year. While COVID-19 had negatively impacted the business in the early stages of the pandemic, Public Storage CEO Joseph Russell told analysts during an earnings call that a robust housing market, employees working from home, and a move out of pricey urban markets has recently helped boost demand. According to the research site Yardi Matrix, rentals of 10-foot by 10-foot non-climate controlled storage units increased by 2.7% nationally in October 2020 compared to the year prior. We know how COVID has affected our company, and, and we assume that it's been similar to other storage companies, and it's been a major growth driver for us. We've seen just this year our organic traffic and, and reservations uh, coming organically has, has, is up 7x. The industry has also benefited in recent years from investments in data analytics and upgrades in technology. 
In July 2020, Public Storage launched an e-rental program allowing customers to reserve, pay, and sign for self-storage space remotely. According to Russell, more than 40% of third quarter 2020 move-ins came via the new e-rental platform. Extra Space Storage debuted a similar feature in August of that year called Rapid Rental. We prided ourselves for some time about being high tech in a low tech industry and, and we want to be on the forefront of everything data analytics wise, um, you know, in this, anything that's cutting edge in terms of technology and where the industry is headed, we, we want to set the pace. The average U.S. home contains about 300,000 items, so it's safe to say America has a clutter problem. According to one study, 54% of Americans say they are overwhelmed by the amount of clutter they have, and 78% of people said they have no idea what to do with it. Self-storage units in the U.S. are rented for a variety of reasons. Small businesses sometimes use facilities to store inventory, and growing families may need the extra space rather than upgrading to a bigger home. But according to analysts, a surplus of items is a key driver of cell storage demand. The growth in and the ease of access to, to more beneficial items for the consumer has caused more growth in this industry. In the 90s, I want to say one in 17 Americans was locked into a, a storage unit. Today, that's one in 10. If people are consuming at the level that they are currently and that continues or it grows, largely they'll end up needing space. You know, and that, that is one of the drivers of self-storage demand. According to Squarefoot, a company that tracks the self-storage industry, over 9% of households in the U.S. rents a storage space, spending on average $88 a month. Renters, according to the Self Storage Association, generally live in single-family homes that have garages, attics, and basements. Long-term residential customers make up about half of industry revenue, followed by short-term residential customers who make up about 21% commercial operators who make up 18%, military personnel at 5.9%, and students at 5.8%, according to IBIS World. Some of the most popular items stored are furniture, clothing, photographs, and household supplies. In addition to interfering with everyday activities like cooking and cleaning, excessive clutter in a home can also have a negative impact on a person's health and on a person's relationship with others, according to research. The more home clutter you have, the less life satisfaction is. The more office clutter you have, the more emotional exhaustion you're going to have. The more, less job satisfaction you're going to have. Over a long period of time, renting storage space can also be costly and the value of good stored can depreciate. Experts say selling, donating, or regifting items is a better option than throwing items in the trash. We hold on to these things thinking maybe Maybe I'll use it. Maybe I'll need it. Maybe the kids will want it. Maybe this or that. And you know, you hope, you're, it's hope, but I think it's a false hope. For the past four decades, the self-storage industry has been one of the fastest growing sectors of the commercial real estate market, benefiting from both upturns and downturns in the economy. In 2018, construction in the self-storage industry reached almost $5 billion, a 350% increase from 2008. The industry profits when people downsize their homes to save money and during upswings in the economy when consumers can afford to spend more on storage services. But like previous sectors that were uprooted through technological developments, self-storage is facing a new threat from digital companies like Clutter, Makespace, and Neighbor. Neighbor is an online marketplace for storing things. The company got its start in 2017 and connects renters who need storage space with their hosts who have room in their garage, driveway, or attic. Think Airbnb, but for your boxes. According to Neighbor, prices tend to be about half the cost of a traditional self-storage facility. We thought that the industry would recognize us most for our cost savings. I mean, $2,000 a year is a ton to save, but hands down the most common piece of feedback we get is just how easy it is to store through neighbor because of that technology piece we've built. And this is an industry that's largely neglected technology. According to Woodbury, the platform has several big advantages over traditional self-storage companies, including cost, proximity to renters, and environmental impact. We've been around for almost four years now, and we've unlocked what would cost a traditional self-storage facility billions of dollars to build. Um, and of course, it didn't cost us billions of dollars to build that because we're allowing homeowners and, and 
business owners the opportunity to monetize their space and make income and pay their mortgages and pay their leases by renting their space out on our platform. And the platform has what it considers another key advantage. According to the Self Storage Association, 39% of self storage demand in 2020 came from millennials. That's more than any other demographic, including boomers and Gen Xers. If you read the news coverage about millennials, you would think that millennials are minimalists. We actually love minimalists because they make great candidates for our hosts. Uh, but the vast majority of the millennial population is actually using storage at higher rates than their parents did.